Today we will uh, look at uh, some of the methods uh, to find the solutions of nonlinear equations. So it's the, that will be the topic of discussion today. So solutions uh, of uh, nonlinear equations, nonlinear equations. Okay, that's what we would want to discuss today. So we saw in the in the last lecture that uh, we were uh, we we have to find solutions of uh, polynomials uh, of the form. So we wrote some some polynomial of the form a n. Uh, so we 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 had a zero plus a one x plus a two x squared of this form. So then, then we have to find uh, the roots or what we call the roots of this polynomial equation. We saw this in the case of a characteristic polynomial to determine the eigenvalues of a matrix. So this is one example where we have to find the solution of a nonlinear equation. Finally, the roots of this polynomial is nothing but saying that this is equal to 0 and finding the solutions of this equations. So we will discuss some of this methods. So we, found, we saw one method of doing that, that is dividing this by a quadratic polynomial and uh, finding the, uh, I mean the factorizing this polynomial into a polynomial of this order that we will write p n of x as some p prime uh, n minus 2 of x uh, into some other polynomial uh, which you would call in this case s o y 2 of x. So we had a quadratic equation, quadratic polynomial multiplying this n minus tooth order polynomial and then we knew uh, we could find the roots of this. So now this is equal to 0 as definitely has one root as y2 of x equal to 0, y2 being a quadratic polynomial and we know how to find closed form solutions of quadratic polynomial. Right. So in general uh, finding the solutions of the nonlinear equation will not be so trivial. Uh, and it occurs in many times that we have uh, complicated nonlinear equations and which are not of just simple quadratic form. Right. So one example is of course is to get the nonlinear equation into a factorize the nonlinear equation, nonlinear function which you have into a quadratic uh, function multiplied by another function and then we can find the, uh, one of the roots as the roots of this quadratic equation. That is what we did in this case of a polynomial equation. But uh, not all nonlinear equations will be in, in the polynomial form, so we may not be able to do this factorization quite easily. In this case, it was easy to do this factorization and write it as a quadratic function and then finding a solution of that. But this may not be always easy. Right. And uh, it will not be always uh, easy to find, in, in the general case of a nonlinear equation, it may not be easy to find a closed form solution of this form at all. So here in the case of quadratic equation we know that we have closed form solutions of this form but if this is more complicated functions it is not even obvious that we have closed form solutions. So the question is uh, uh, what do we do then we obviously will go into some uh, numerical technique of finding the, finding the solutions of that. So in the case where closed form solutions are difficult okay, we would, uh, or uh, impossible to find 
Okay, so we would uh, we would solve the nonlinear equations of this form f of x equal to zero in, the, in using some numerical technique. So one of the ways, to the first thing one should do when when you get an equation of this form, that is any any nonlinear function of f of x, and uh, we have to find the roots of this equation. That is, if you are just given an equation of the form f of x equal to zero, and you are asked to find the roots of this equation. What we do is to find is just to plot this function f of x. If it's a simple function to plot, okay, then we would just plot it. Okay, so then we would have, you know, if it's especially if it's a case like this, and we would plot f of x versus x. We just plot this function, okay, so that and then uh, let's say this function. So that's our uh, y equal to zero. So that's a y equal to zero or f of x equal to zero line, okay. And then, if you have a function which behaves something like this, okay. Now, all these crossing points are solutions of this equation. Right. Or, in another sense, the solution of this equation is just the same as the zeros of this of this function, right? So, we just have to find where this function crosses the the axis, the x-axis, or the f of x equal to zero line. Okay, so that will be the simplest method. Okay, so if you are at least to get an idea of Maybe may not be very accurate if by visual thing, but at least that's the simplest method, and it is the first. It may be a good method to find uh, get at least an approximate value of the zeros of this function f of x. So okay, these are the points at with this. Uh, let me call them x1, x2, x3, x4. So we have x1, x2, uh, x3, x4. Okay, so now these are the uh, four points for which this function goes to zero, so there's the solutions of these equations. Okay, so at least we found four such roots. Okay, so that's a simple graphical method to do that. So note another important property that whenever this function, uh, whenever near the zero, right, near one of the zeros, near x1, x2, x3, and x4, this function would change sign, right. So that is a zero. So obviously this is negative here and positive on this side. So when the function goes past its solution, one of the roots, okay, and then it would change its sign. Okay, so we can use that in other methods. That is, we could use in any of the iterative schemes. Uh, we would use this property that the function changes sign when it goes to the root, unless in a very special case where it just touches there and then goes away. We will not discuss such cases. Okay. So here is uh, cases in which uh, this function crosses the axis that f equal to 0 line okay so with it changes sign so we can use that property and in iterative schemes so that's something which you would be using okay. so in general way is to first uh, do this plot this function and then look at the solutions uh, by inspection right so that is called the graphical method or do uh, we make a guess for the solution. So even by plotting, we could only get a guess for the solutions because the ac the accurate values may be difficult to read off from a graph. Okay, but then we know that the function changes sign at this point. Okay, so we could iterate around that point and then get to the value to decide accuracy. Okay. So in general, we have uh, uh, four different methods of doing this. Okay, so all so the first one which I discussed is a is a graphical method. And all others, that is the method of successive bisection, which we will discuss in detail, newton raphson's iterative method or secant methods, all these methods are, are basically iterative methods. That you make a guess solution and you iterate around that. So all these three methods. So I would classify this as two basic methods. One is a graphical methods, okay, another is iterative methods. We will see. So the graphical method is what I just described here. On the board, that is just you know just plotting the function and then looking at where it actually crosses the zero axis. And now we will look at uh, uh, so the method of successive bisection. So that's what we do. We just use this property that the function changes sign at uh, this value. So we will make a guess value. We guess. So it's not enough to make one guess. We have to make two guesses. Okay. So we'll do that. I'll just replot this function again. So let's say that's my x is equal to zero line, okay, and my function is something like this, okay. So then I will make uh, I I'll, I have to make two guesses, okay. 
so one x1 and x2 okay so we choose x1 to be such that it is positive so that I call this as x1 and this as x2 okay that is my x axis. So that is the idea so we have to provide like two points uh, x uh, okay, in this case x0 and x1 sorry so x0 and x1 we choose x0 and x1 okay so such that f of x0 and f of x1 are opposite signs okay so we chosen f of x0 to have uh, which be negative and f of x1 to be positive is choice. So the basic idea in the method of successive bisection is to choose first make a guess okay such that uh, of, of two points okay such that it is on either side of a root okay now now there can be dangers in this okay we will we will discuss that for example in the initial guess has to be uh, reasonably good that if the function has multiple roots and if you choose uh, if the function has multiple roots now let us say it goes like this and if you choose one to be here and one to be here okay so that is if you choose your initial guess uh, to be somewhere here again one here okay and then again this function has changed sign of course this is positive here this is negative here but then we will not iterate it to uh, into the correct correct um, uh, root okay. so it has to be reasonably close the solutions okay and we have to have an idea that there are no multiple roots there are no we do not have multiple roots within this interval okay. So that is one of the problems with this CCA bisection that is we have to make initial guesses which are reasonably close uh, close enough uh, close in the sense that we have to make sure that there is only one root between this x0 and x1 and then what we do is we find the midpoint of this that we have to take x1 plus x0 by 2 as a new x2 value. Okay, so we so now we will find so we took an x1 here x0 here so which is x2 is equal to x0 plus x1 by 2. Okay. So now that will come somewhere here and then we will find the function value at that point okay so we have the function value at that point okay let me let me draw this a little far so that it I can demonstrate it better okay so the x x2 would be somewhere here so the x2 now so f of x2 from this graph you can see that f of x2 is uh, uh, less than 0 okay. so the two pos possibilities you find x2 so you have first x0 and x1 then you found x2 which is a is a midpoint of x0 and x1 okay and then we find f of x2 there are two possibilities of course we could be uh, uh, and and three pos uh, three possibilities actually if you are lucky so normally it is either zero is greater than zero or less than zero the two possible if it is less than zero then what we do is we replace we will throw away x2 and replace the throw away x0 and replace x0 by x2 okay now in this case we will say now x0 is now x2 okay so that is this x0 is been shifted to this point and then we again find the mean of these two okay now next time when we find the mean of that it will be somewhere here okay on this side of the thing okay so then so that is the case so next iteration we will have f of x2 greater than 0 so then we will replace x1 by x1 equal to x2 okay. so in the next point right so we can see that if I take this as x0 okay now I took the mean and it will be somewhere here okay so then I will get it as positive the function value in that case I will throw away x1 and then move my x1 here okay so I have x1 here and x0 here so I am I am closing on to the onto the 0 so that is a, a very simple uh, idea of successive bisection so let me summarize that here okay so you have uh, if you f of x2 is greater than 0 then the root is we know that between x0 and x2 so we will replace x1 by x2 and if it is less than 0 then we will replace x0 by x2 okay. and now we send and search in the interval between 0 1 and 1 and 2 so that is that is the basic idea so then we have you know so let us say take a function of this form okay complicated function f of x is equal to 667.38 by x square into 1 minus exponential something minus x exponential of minus 0 0.146843 x minus 15 so it is not easy to guess the solutions of this 
some nonlinear equation. So we will take two trial points okay, which enclose the root x0 and x1 right and then we make the f of x0 and f of x1 are opposite sides. So I am just summarizing what we just discussed here and so then we have the root like this so that, that function behaves something like this and we have the roots x1 and x0 here okay. So here x0 is positive x1 is negative okay so it is 2.5 and 2.5.5 and the root is somewhere here from graph you can see but if you have not plotted the graph you do not know where it is. So we just taken two values of x0 and x1 okay such that one is positive and other is negative right and then uh, we found the mean of that that is equal to 4. So we, we shifted the mean of x0 and x x0 and x1 is somewhere here so that is 4 and the function value there uh, function value there is uh, is positive right that we can see. So we replace x0 by that okay. So we have our x0 shifted here okay. So you can see that in successive bisections uh, so we will continue doing this okay and then you can see that the 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 these two comes closer x0 and x1 comes closer and closer okay. and so that is the way we would finally arrive at uh, the, the solutions okay. So we repeat this bisection procedure okay and uh, we always enclose the roots in so we always make sure that we enclose the roots in each interval okay and then as soon as we reach the accuracy which we need we, we or the precision we need we will stop there okay. So in this case the function the root or the function was 4.72. Okay, so that is that is what we, we just uh, see okay. So now we will have to say I just said that we have to look at the accuracy we want to give when we reach the desired accuracy we stop it now the question is what is the desired accuracy okay. So that also we will have to worry about okay. For example in this particular case we will see that you know we will by the bisection procedure will uh, each each with each iteration okay with each iteration we will we will half the interval right because that is the that is the scheme here each iteration we are the interval is halved. So we start from this and then we go to that okay, and then we go to uh, we go to this etc. So we keep halving the interval okay. So in about 10 iterations we would have gone about 1000 the interval would have shrunk to about order of the roughly the order of 1000 okay. okay so the and now we have to be careful that we have to stop it somewhere when the when the when it hits the machine precision. Okay, otherwise it will get into a, an infinite loop. So we should not ask for accuracy which are beyond the machine precision. So that is something which you should be careful about. Okay. So now the question is how do we uh, actually come with uh, an idea of, of the what is the accuracy which we require and what is the accuracy which we can get. Okay, that is what we summarized here that uh, so we have to terminate this iterative scheme algorithm okay, when we a predetermined criteria for the, for the allowed error is met right so that is what we want to do. So we we cannot ask the ask the pro function ask the iteration to be continued till the f of x goes to 0 exactly because it is a it is a floating point operation so we cannot go to get to exactly to 0 the function cannot go to 0 and also because when you do this scheme okay x1 x0 plus x1 by 2 we will have some kind of uh, round off errors coming okay. So beyond some iteration uh, iterations uh, point we will not be able to get any more accuracy. So we have to define a proper a proper criteria. So uh, we cannot of course uh, define a criteria that uh, that depend on the knowledge of the, of the true root right because we do not know the true root. Okay, so we do not know we cannot define a criteria which based on the, on the actual knowledge of the root because we could actually have multiple routes to solutions and we want to do actually an automated program. So we cannot have uh, we cannot define the criteria based on the knowledge of them. So these are algorithmic uh, details. So since the function goes to 0 at the true root okay, one such criteria is that uh, the function value itself. Okay. So now here there is a problem okay. because uh, the function value we could say that uh, you know, this kind of a program uh, this kind of a function it might work well. So what is saying that okay now we know that uh, the function goes to 0 at that point. So we could say that okay I could have you know when the function value reaches uh, uh, the function f of x uh, reaches f of x is uh, close to some epsilon okay. So that is 
epsilon some small number okay, which is within the machine precision and then I can stop this iteration. So that is looks reasonable way of doing it okay, but again there is a problem here because the way the function approaches the 0 okay, so let us let us see that okay, that is in this kind of a function it may be okay, but let us say the function is uh, something of this form. So that is again my 0 axis, okay, so I will just draw it there. So that is x axis and that is my f of x. Now let us say the function is something which goes to 0 uh, rather slowly, okay. So it, it is like, okay, it is something like this, some function which goes to, which goes like that, okay. So in that case, now we know the root is here, okay, but this slope could be very, very small. So in that case if you put in that f of x equal to some small value is my root that could be very far away from anywhere. It could be even here but it could be even very far away. So because this, this values are so small we could even have the whole range of x values for which we get the same answer. we get this answer that f of x is equal to epsilon. So when the case in this particular in this case is where we are actually looking at the 0 of the function. So the function going to 0 is not a good criteria because if it goes with a small slope okay this can lead to an erroneous result. So that is one uh, case where it would it would fail. So the best approach would be that to look at what is in the each step but what do we get in each step that is uh, you find the new x2 values that is uh, that we find a new x value right as our root and we compare it with the old value and take the ratio of these two okay. so that is that is a better uh, approach okay. So in this case what we call the xr nu is the what we obtain from the bisection x0 plus x1 by 2. Okay. So we did this method here okay so here so we did that x0 plus x1 by 2 and we got it as here right. So that is one value and then we took this as x0 and then we did another iteration of x0 plus x1 by 2 and we got the value here okay. So that is x2 in the first step and this is x2 in the second step or this is this is called x2 old and this is x2 new let us call it okay. Then I can do auto x2 new minus x2 old divided by x2 new a mod of that. So that will be one one. Uh, one criteria of an epsilon okay. So instead of looking at the function value itself we look at it each iteration how much it is jumping so in that it will be okay in this kind of cases okay. So if this is not jumping too much right so the the roots are not jumping too much then we will be pretty close to the uh, the actual answer so that is the that is the idea okay. So that is a better method uh, because the, this the does not depend on the slope of the function. So the slope of the, it does not depend on the slope of the function. So even in the cases where the slope is too small this would work okay. So remember here what I call xr nu is what we obtain from the bisection that is x0 plus x1 by 2 and then what we call xr old is the one what we obtain from bisection the previous uh, iteration step okay. okay. So then we could have an epsilon a which is now uh, again on the machine precision okay it's a predetermined value but it, it normally should be higher than the machine precision so that's that the round of errors does not take us into an infinite loop okay you pay, pay attention should be paid to that fact okay so now here is an example of uh, such a such a routine you can do it with a calculator okay so we have a function of the form 1 minus x square plus log 1 plus x equal to 0 okay so i make some guesses okay so there's some some guesses tabulated here so guess values okay so i say x0 is 0.5 and x1 is 2 so for x0 x equal to 0.5 this is a positive number okay and for x equal to 2 this is a negative number it's easy to see that right okay so then that means that my initial guesses x0 and x1 actually uh, what you call brackets the root okay that's it technical term which you use that it brackets the root it is on either side of the root and then uh, I take the mean of this that x0 and x1 and I get 1.25 okay. 
and then I look at the function value at that 1.25 it happens to be positive okay. so you remember now this is positive x0 is on the positive side x1 is on the negative side here okay so f of x2 is positive oh, so I would what I would do is I would just replace uh, this one okay by x2 okay now I am bracketing my solution between 1.25 and 2 in the next step you can see so in this case to find the epsilon a I have used x0 and x2 because this is what I am going to replace okay so I take I take x0 and x2 since this is what I am going to replace in the first step the next step it is obvious what are we going to replace but here it is uh, x, x0 and x2 so I take the, uh, the difference between these two divided by 1.25 as my as my epsilon a so then I replaced that by 1.25 okay and then I took the uh, the mean of that so I got 1.625 so x0 and x1 and that will the function value at that point is negative so obviously I am going to replace now x1 by this new value so my new new bracketing is between 1.25 and 1.625. So we continue continue this process again we got the function value to be negative okay so it is not necessary that we need to jump on either side right so we have so in this case again this uh, function value is negative so again we will replace x1 uh, by the new value okay by the new value that is 1.4375 so we now we have the bracketing between 1.25 and 1.435 and you can see that the error the absolute error that is the magnitude of this is decreasing pretty fast. So in about uh, in about 15 in the case in this case in about 15 iterations okay we have gone to a very slow very small error. Okay, and we find that our root is about 1.36389. Okay, so we have accuracy up to up to that. Right. So that is what we have obtained in this thing, and we can see that the error, uh, the function has gone to. In this particular case, the function also has gone to z very close to zero, and you can see that here that uh, the the function is already going to zero very slowly here. Okay, and the, but the epsilon a, you can see how fast it is decreasing in this case okay. so definitely this is a better better uh, method of determining the accuracy of our root by looking at this epsilon a which is x2 uh, which is x2 new minus x2 old divided by x2 new now that is an example of uh, one such method okay. so now we could use a similar method and uh, another one which is now that was the simplest way is to just to do bracketing and then do the the mean take the mean at every time step so we could slightly improve on that and by using what is called a method of false position. So this method again uses bracketing techniques that is we need two guesses x0 and x1 with f of x0 less than 0 f of x1 greater than 0 either way does not matter what this is a notation here we are going to use is f of x0 less than 0 and f of x1 greater than 0. But the difference is again that from this value of x0 and x1 we will go to uh, the new values uh, of uh, a new value and replace one of x0 or x1 depending upon the new value we get is x2 the f of x2 we get is positive or negative the function is positive or negative at that so it is same as the bisection method it is not, not very different. So what is different is that the new value is uh, not the mean of x0 and x1. Okay, we will try to be a little more clever in this particular case. So now the new guess here is obtained uh, is a by looking at where the line connecting the two power that, that x0 f of x0 and x1 f of x1 meets the x axis. So that is uh, this here I will just show that show that here again. So you we had uh, this case okay, f of x0 so let us take this so we had f of x0 and x1 so that was our initial cases okay so so we choose an f of x0 uh, to be uh, less than 0 so f of x0 is less than 0 f of x1 greater than 0 so now in the bisection method what we did was uh, to simply choose uh, x1 plus x2 uh, by 2 that's what our bisection method was in this case okay in the in the method of false position what we do is we take a straight line connecting this point to this point sorry this point to this point okay so we, we draw a straight line okay like this 
from this okay and then we say that where this line meets the the x axis the x axis okay that's a new solution so that will be our x2 now okay so that's the idea so we do we do, we write the, we write the equation of this straight line okay and find the intersection of that straight line with the x axis right so that's what it is okay so the new position so we know how to write the equation of a straight line which connects two points x0 f of x0 and x1 f of x1 right and it will definitely meet the x axis somewhere okay so then uh, uh, then if this is crossing the crossing the x axis because it changes sign okay so it will it will you will get that intersecting somewhere on the x axis right so then we will replace uh, we will get a new x2 value which is the intersection point of this then the formula for that is this we can which we can easily uh, derive from the fact that this uh, that you can write the equation of the straight line x0 which connects x0 f of x0 and x1 f of x1 and take the zero of that function that straight line where it crosses the zero okay so that gives us uh, the new uh, value x2 so then again we will replace x0 or x1 by x2 depending upon whether it is positive or negative and in this case uh, x2 being f of x2 being negative okay so in this particular case we will replace x0 by uh, x2 and we have now this two solutions so now we have a point here and then the next straight line would be something like we have to draw a straight line between this point and this point okay now that again cuts the axis here so you can see it comes pretty close very fast okay this is definitely much faster okay little more complicated in the sense that we have a formula which is not as simple as x0 plus uh, x1 plus x2 by x0 plus x1 by 2 but we have to find a solution of this uh, this but it's 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 still uh, pretty simple and then you can find a, a new root here in the next time and then it and you can see that that comes very close to the actual root so that is uh, okay so as you remember that again that we we assume here the function has opposite signs on either side of the root that's that's important okay that's a thing which you have to remember okay so what's the method of false position so we assume that we have the function as opposite signs and which is always true right and then we'll make two guesses x0 and x1 such that they are on negative and positive and then we will find the line connecting f of x0 x0 f of x0 to x1 f of x1 okay and we'll find the point at which that line crosses the x axis and let that point be x2 okay and then we have an expression for the x2 and then we will replace x0 or x1 by x2 depending upon whether f of x0 x2 is less than 0 or f of x2 is greater than 0 okay so again we will see this in the in the summary in a in a block diagram here uh, okay so here we'll again see that uh, the false position method so again we have taken the same function as that too okay and then we again take the two function which are encloses the root okay and then the same as on the bisection take the same say same function and the same as in the in the bisection case okay and then now we will draw a we'll draw a straight line connecting these two functions at uh, these two function points okay that's what we done and that's our new a new point here right and then that new then we will we will shift x1 to that new point okay so we will have x1 shifting to this new value here so that's that's what x1 has shifted to that that point okay and then uh, we again have a new line now connecting this x0 and that function value so now that is shifted to here okay so that is the that's the next step okay so we keep keep doing this iteration again and again yeah so we'll we'll continue this iteration uh, till we reach the desired accuracy so that that's what has been shown here actually so that's in in a sense this is very similar to what we saw in the in the case of uh, the uh, the false position i uh, sorry the, the the bisection method not very different and we will again see a Uh, an example of uh, you, the use of this uh, function using log of one minus x square plus log of one plus x, as we saw in the earlier case. Okay, and we will see that this converges uh, much faster than the one which we saw earlier. 
that is the, the bisection method. Okay. I will also see that the error here is decreasing monotonically. Okay. So, but there is a warning here that there are uh, problems with uh, uh, bisection methods. Okay. So, so that is you can see that yourself if you try to solve an equation of this form. Okay. So, I encourage you to just look at this form uh, a function of very simple function x x to the power of 12 minus 1 equal to 0. Okay. And you compare you do this with the bisection method and also with the, uh, the false position method and compare your answers by plotting the error as a function of the iteration number and see how does it converge. Okay, so two methods you can try all these things that either by taking x2 as a point at which this straight line connecting these two initial guesses are crossing the x axis or by just taking the mean of, of this x0 and x1. So that is what we have seen so far. Okay. So, you know both these methods need a good guess about where all the zeros are. Okay. So, that is also another point. Okay. So, the we compare these two methods one thing is uh, that okay, for bisection method would uh, sorry this false position method might converge much faster okay, that is in some cases. Okay. And, but both the methods uh, require uh, as some drawbacks as the common drawbacks and that is one is that both requires the zeros all the zeros to be listed. So, we need to know how many zeros are there and we need to know where these zeros are okay, before we proceed to find the answer. Okay. So, one thing is to how to list all the zeros. Okay. So, so, one would be of course is to plot it and then look at it. Okay. Okay. So, then the simplest uh, scheme to list all zeros will be to start from one end and the interval and, and you, whenever you look at all the uh, points at which the function changes sign and how many times the function changes sign. Again, here there is a problem that we have to go in a, a in a step size which is smaller than the distance the, between any two rows. Okay. So, how do we list all the zeros? That's a question, right? So, then in, in that question, we'll say that okay, I start from one end and I keep going towards the, along this axis, and every time it changes sign, I know that I have passed one root. Okay, so I have one zero here, and then I pass here, and I get another zero because it changes sign, and etc. But again, this has a problem that the step size we use to go, right? We'll see that in an implementation of program, and when we look at a program, that uh, uh, whether the step size we choose as we go along the x-axis has to be smaller than the interval between these roots. So if you go a larger interval, that we might just miss. Okay, we might jump from here to here, and if you use a larger step size, and we say that we are not past a root. Okay, so we'll miss both the roots. Okay, that's 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 possible. So we have to be small enough to, to in increment. Okay. The increment u p should be should be very small. So then the question is how small and what is the value of that? So so that's a, that's a problem with this. Okay, this method. So okay, we we need to have an idea about the about the sign. Okay, so it's it's advantages to have uh, to use uh, prob, use uh, methods which doesn't use uh, this uh, kind of bracketing methods. Is that something which we should be looking at now? Okay. So again, there's one more problem here. So we'll try to bracket uh, all the zeros of this function, not, not the solution. Just bracket all the zeros of the solution by some method which you we're using different step sizes, okay. sine 10x plus cos 13x. So you could just try to bracket all the zeros of this function. Don't try to solve for it, but just bracket it, and then you plot this function and see whether you have obtained all the zeros. Okay. Just to demonstrate that uh, you do have uh, uh, a problem with the, with the step size determination or just to get a feel for this pro step size determination problem. So, we see that uh, the common problem with both bisection and the method of false position is this determination of the zeros. That is the biggest hurdle. Otherwise, it is an extremely simple method. Both are extremely simple method to implement. Okay, so, we just have to make one guess and then we can continue doing that because we are finding a 0. And once you found one 0, right, once you found we have started with one x1 and x2 and we found one function, a uh, one 0 point, and then we could just take the initial guess as a little above that, okay, and then we again bracket these solutions. So, once we have found one 0, so let us say in this case we found solution 1, okay, so let us say one solution we found here is xs, okay, that is our solution xs. So, and then the next solution to find the next solution, uh, we could 
uh, start with an initial guess at which one value slightly higher than this okay. and then another value where the function has changed sign. Okay. So, you again go look for the where the function changed sign and then start with a another value there okay. and then you can again bracket that and then it will converge to that, that root. So, once you found one root it is easy to go to the other root, okay. but again uh, when you search for the zeros and we will search for the points at which function changes sign, okay, you have to be careful. So, that is a, that's a most important point here in this in both these methods. And the two important points to take care when you run a, when you write a program on this is one is that you have to make sure that you have enclosed all the roots and the second thing is that the accuracy you demand uh, that is x old minus x new divided by x new the modulus of that should not be more than the machine precision okay, such that you know we will not get into a, a, an infinite loop because of uh, because of the uh, round off errors because that is something which you have to be careful. Okay, so, now we look at some methods okay, which does not use the pre knowledge of the zeros of the function okay, and they are called direct methods. So, this I try to we saw this in the uh, methods in which we need some idea about the solutions. Uh, so, now we will look at some methods which uh, which will not uh, use that okay. okay so, what are, what are the previous things which we, we, we what we just saw so that is we saw that uh, it is an iterative scheme and we saw that it needs two guess solutions on either side of the 0 of the function okay. So, we need a pre knowledge of the zeros. okay so, that is a basic sum okay. So, now we will look at cases we need to we need two guesses on either side of the 0 he is not needed so because uh, you know, we might have a the function value itself which is given by some other program in which we will not be able to scan the whole thing and find out where the zeros are okay so in that case we need a slightly different method so basically what we are saying is that we need to make a, we need a method in which we the, the best at the worst okay we need to make only one guess it will be very nice if you had a method in which we do not need to make any guess at all okay. So, you want to find a solution of a nonlinear function okay in which we do not want to make any guesses okay that will be the best okay or at worst we want methods in which we make only one guess okay. So, that is so that we do not have to have an idea about where the zeros are. Okay, so that is that is one guess that it, not, it can be on either side of the zero, right? We don't want it to be that always to one side of the zero. So it can be anywhere on the on the side of the zero. Okay, so we will look at uh, some some methods of which uses this form. So that is one is the fixed point iteration method. So in the fixed point iteration method, we will convert the function f of x. So that's the next method which we are going to look at. Okay. So, it is called the fixed point iteration method. So, here what we need is again one guess, we need to make one guess. Okay. So, we have a function of the form f of x equal to 0. So, that is what we have. Okay. So, as before, so some function f of x equal to 0. Now, what we want to do is uh, we will make one guess. Okay. So, that is x equal to x1, okay. as x equal to x1, that is the solution we say x1. Is uh, is our guess the first guess? Okay, x equal to x one, and then from that we want to go into the zero. That is the value at which this goes to zero. So in the case of the fixed point iteration, uh, we need to write the function f of x as uh, g of x minus x. Okay, so that's the must. You should be able to write this function f of x as g of x minus x and then we can say that where f of x goes to 0 is uh, equal is same as saying that x is equal to g of x. Okay. So, this equal to 0 uh, implies right. So, that implies x equal to g of x. So, that is the basic idea behind uh, the fixed point iteration. Okay. So, we start with one guess and we have this g of x equal to x okay. it is like kind of a map okay. and then we say that the next iteration point is obtained by. So, we just start with one guess x i and the next point x i plus 1 is given by g of x i and you can see that if this is actually a solution your guess x i is a solution then this, this will be this is an identity right. So, you get new x i plus 1 you get it will be same as x i. 
So that is the idea. So the error would be x i plus 1 minus g of x i divided by x i plus 1. So now I just show you this method graphically again here. So, so the, and then we will come back to here and then discuss the possible the, where, where this method can fail and where this method can actually work better okay we will look at that now. Okay, so here is uh, is the uh, fixed point iteration. So we write f of x equal to zero as x equal to g of x. Okay, and then you know so we'll start with some guess. Okay, so we have converted that as x equal to g of x, right? So we can start from some guess, and then we'll write x i plus one as g of x i. Okay. So then we'll continue this. Okay, so so that's that's basically the the graphical representation of this. Okay, so we have a function like this. And it's basically what we are trying to find is this y equal to x line, this intersection point. Okay, that's that's our that's our idea. Right? Okay, so we start with uh, x equal to zero here, and then we want to converge onto that root. Right? So we started with some function. This this is a graph here. It shows x and g of x, right? And we started with some guess. Okay, some some guess x zero, right? and then you know we we generated. The function g of x, okay, so some guess uh, x zero, and we got a new x value from that, okay, and the new x value, and then we went to the, the next g of x, and then that gave us a new x value here, okay, that gives us a g of x here, okay, and then that gives us a new, a new x value here. Right? So this is the line y equal to x, okay. So by writing uh, x equal to g of x, basically what we are trying to find is the is the is graphically what this means this, okay. So that is. So g of x function is like that, and then y equal to x function is this, and we want we want something which satisfies both, right? That means we want the intersection point of that, right? We have y equal to x and y equal to g of x, right? It satisfies the our x value should satisfy both, so that means that we need uh, we need where this y equal to x line intersects the g of x. We want to find that iteratively. Okay? Graphically, it's easy; we can always read that off here, but iteratively, we want to find out. And that's that's what been shown here. So we started with an x zero value, right? So that's the the g of x corresponding to that is is given by this height, right? So that is our next x value. Okay. So that x value is this that is corresponding to g of x. So from that x value we found out the g of x that is here. Okay. So that's our next x value. That is x two. Okay, and then we found the g of x from there, and then we'll we'll finally converge it onto converge it onto this point uh, rather slowly, but we'll surely converge it onto this point here. Okay, so uh, so again uh, we'll see that this will work only when uh, the slope of the the g of x line is less than one. Okay, otherwise it will uh, diverge. Okay. So we will we'll make progress here, but it's rather slow. And one more important point to remember is that uh, it will not converge when the slope of the g of x line is uh, is greater than one. Okay, that's can be that's what I'm trying to show here. Okay, so now here is a here is a function, and you want to find the zero of this function. So if your initial guess was here, uh, we could find the it will converge here. Okay, now this is a this is this function the g of x function has a slope which is less than one. Actually, this is negative slope here. Okay, and you started from here. And then this will converge pretty fast onto this. But let's say uh, we started from we we started somewhere else. Okay, so our initial guess was again it's only one initial guess we have to make only for x zero, but we made it somewhere here. Okay, and uh, hoping that we will converge onto this point, but we will not. Okay, because the slope of this function here is larger than one. Okay, so what we basically find is that it doesn't intersect. So this just goes away. So that's that's a problem with this method. Okay, so we should be able to write the f of x equal to zero as, um, as x equal to g of x function, and we also need uh, uh, the initial guesses uh, at points where g prime of x, that is the derivative of g, is less than one. Okay, the g prime of x should be less than one. Okay, the two values has to be satisfied. So that's something which you can easily see, right? So by just taking the x g of x i plus one minus g of x i, okay, divided by x i plus one minus x i, that's that will be the that will be the slope of this, right? And comparing that with our x i plus one x i minus so 
So, we are writing this equation here as x i plus 1 is equal to g of x i right and so uh, we, ca we can e easily see that g of uh, x i plus 1 minus g of x i divided by x i plus 1 minus x i okay if you write something like this. So, g of x i plus 1 is uh, in our case would be x i plus 2. So, the g of x i is x i plus 1 that is what we get okay and we have x i plus 1 minus x i. And we want uh, we want this to be this is the this is the this is the, the distance between the two guesses two roots uh, the distance between the uh, to the two guesses or iterative uh, the results in the iteration in the i plus one step and this is the distance between the roots at the ith step and we want this to be less than one okay and this is the g prime okay so we know the g prime has to be less than one for this to work otherwise this will diverge right so we need the g prime that is the derivative of g prime to be less than 1 for this iterative scheme to work. So, that will be the, the drawback of this particular scheme. So, even though only one guess has to be has to be made this uh, still have a, a drawback here that is that uh, we need g prime of x to be less than 1. Okay. So, that is an important uh, problem with this method. Okay. Again you could find the solution of as a problem you could look at uh, a function of the form x minus cos x equal to 0. It is an easy problem where it obviously can be written as x minus g of x. Now, g of x can be easily identified as cos x here and you could just you know find the roots root of this ok start with x equal to 0 0.5 and you can see how, how fast it would converge. Right. So, we will find the g of x value and then you uh, know that is uh, so, I just also written the f of x value here just so this has to go to 0 that f of x now is x minus cos x right. Okay. So, I just look at the g of x now the g of x is the new x value right and then I again find the g of x here and then replace x by that and then you know you go by this iteration scheme. And so, finally, you have to reach x is equal to g of x. So, you will find that in this particular case uh, we have gone to something like 15 iterations and uh, it is ok the, the error is still not very 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 low, but uh, the function has gone to uh, close to 0. So, that is again the problem of the slope ok. So, there is other one more problem which would be to find the root of the equation x minus e to the power of x plus 2 equal to 0 ok. So, you could do this problem with all the three methods which we have now so far looked at that is the bisection method, the method of false position and uh, the uh, this fixed point iteration ok. So, we have three methods we looked at bisection, the method of false position and the fixed point iteration. So, you could do this problem that is x minus e of x plus 2 equal to 0 uh, with all the three methods ok. You could in the case of fixed point iteration we need only one guess. So, we could do it from x equal to 0.5 and x equal to 1.5 as the two different guesses ok. So, that is that is a, a summary of uh, uh, the method which uh, of uh, so far we have looked at ok. So, now we could uh, in the next class probably we would look at some other uh, iterative scheme again another iterative scheme ok, but again which uses only one particular uh, one only one guess ok. So, the guess the problems in which we need or the methods in which we need two guesses are only fixed point iteration and uh, sorry the method of uh, false position and the bisection ok. That is two that is the two methods in which we need two guesses and we need to uh, we need the two guesses such that it brackets the, the zeros and if you have many zeros or many roots then we need many such guesses which will bracket all the roots. Okay. In the case of fixed point iteration we need only one guess ok and that is uh, uh, could, could be anywhere, but it should be such that uh, the function the derivative of g of x that is we write f of x as x minus g of x and we need the derivative of g of x that uh, around that point to be less than 1. Okay, such a thing. Okay, now we look at another method that is called the Newton-Raphson. Again, an iterative scheme. Okay, which is which is similar to the method of uh, the fixed point iteration. So that's what we would be discussing in the in the next class. We will also look at some of the implementations uh, the, of the uh, ideas or the methods which we discussed in this class in the next one. <laughs>
Thank you.